Hey guys, I'm Amarot and I already told you I pretty much decided to quit modding uh, more than a year ago. Uh, but I may still make some videos from time to time uh, if I deem them necessary. And uh, there was a question uh, from uh, GXD Like Void uh, who asked me whether I can make a video about uh, creating new ARA IDs on a custom map. So, in case you don't know what ARA IDs are, those are pretty much zones and subzones. And I'm not going to show you how to make it on work on new map, but uh, the process with already existing map is completely the same. Uh, so that's something I want to talk about here uh, and today, because that's kind of video I really owed you for quite a long time. I wanted to do it for a very long time. It was on my to-do list and it's fairly basic and something quite important, I would say. So here that video is. <laughs> All right, okay, let's get to it. So ARA ID uh, is changed in Nogit in this ARA ID paint. And what you can see is that I've got my map, which is here and I've got zones in that map and those zones can, don't have to, but can have subzones. So for example for Elven Forest you can see that I've got Elven Forest in Azeroth and it contains subzones like Goldshire and Stone Cairn something whatever it is called and so on. So that's already it, there's nothing more to this system. So I've got zones in map and subzones in those zones and I can assign them whenever I want pretty much. I can just select one of them, let's say Alvin Forest, and now <coughs> this place is there, it, it already is here, never mind that. But now on this place, I'm pretty much placing or painting Alvin Forest zone. You can see it here, down here in Nogit QT. So we've got Alvin Forest here, but I can also place, for example, Echo Ridge Mine here. And now we can see that we've got Echo Ridge Mine in Elven Forest on this place. So those are ARA IDs and I'm going to call them zones and subzones from now on. So how to make your own custom ones? Well, all you need to do is pretty much close Nogit because I don't want my computer to learn to fly thanks to its fan. Open WDBX Editor and open MapDBC and ARA Table DBC. For MapDBC, we want to find our map or pretty much we need to know ID of our map. So I'm going to create a new zone for Azeroth actually, which is ID 0. So I just need to know this number for my map. I want to create new ARA ID or zone or subzone on. Now you need to go to ARA table DBC and create new record here pretty much. Every single record here is one zone or subzone in game. Both of them are in the same DBC, which is a little bit unfortunate system, but it is what it is, right. I already created new ones here, but the way to do your own zone, the best way probably is just select any already existing zone, which works in the same way the new one is supposed to work like and copy it. Uh, so I would suggest you to pick, for example, if you want to make new zone for general area. It's not going to be dungeon, it's not going to be a battleground or arena or anything like that. It's going to be just general open world zone. Well, pick another already existing general open world zone and copy it. So let's pick, for example, wetlands. Right click and copy line. And now we can right click here and paste line. And we've got new zone. Now change your continent ID. In my case, zero is what I actually wanted. So you need to make a continent ID match your uh, your map ID. So my map ID is, map, map ID is zero. So my continent ID here is supposed to be zero as well. Parent area ID. This one actually determines whether this is a zone or a subzone. Uh, what you can see here in those two zones I already made here is that I've got this zone and I got this subzone which is in it. So it has reference on that parent zone. So either you have zero, it's zone, or you have reference on parent uh, zone. And in that case, this becomes subzone. Arabit, that's something you need to make always always unique, which means that you need to always change this. Never leave this at the value 
uh, you have you copied from different record. So three thousand seven hundred and eleven in this case. By the way, you can't insert large value than four thousand and ninety five. It is, I think. So four four thousand is pretty much maximum value you can put here. So don't uh, put the ridiculous numbers here. You need to really stick to those. So just keep it as low as possible, but always make sure that you get unique uh, integer here because that number is important for server side maps. Now for flex, I pretty much use 64 everywhere on my uh, usual uh, on my usual zones. Uh, I won't go into details with those maps with those, those flags. I'm going to link into description. Uh, site where you've got documentation for ARA table and here you've got all existing flags. So just go through them and if any of them seem like something you want to experiment with or actually something what you may need for your zone, well go for it, use those flags. But otherwise if you want just generic open world zone, 64 flag just is used quite commonly and works, seems to work fine or it seems to not cause any issues at all I would say rather. Those two columns here are actually, I don't know what they are for, really, not for sure, but this one is pretty much always zero, and this one is, is always 11 or zero. So I just use zero and 11, and it doesn't seem to work really or do anything, I don't know, I'm not sure. With ambience ID, zone music, and intro sound, or rather intro music as well, those are three uh, values you probably want to change or want to set to something. Uh, what I usually do is either I, well, pretty much two options you've got. Either find some zone you like, let's say you like sounds and music in Grizzly Hills, all right, find zone for Grizzly Hills and copy those three values from it. Or you can actually make your own ambience and your own zone music, your own intro music and so on. You can make your own ones. They are fairly simple structures which are just referencing to sound entries dbc so if you are familiar with the dbc easy for you if not i am not going to cover this in this tutorial but still those three zone music ambience and intro music exploration level i usually use 255 uh, it's pretty much a level that zone is supposed to work for in regards of so exploration, I think that this is used by experience, which you get for it, for ex, uh, for exploring that area. I'm not completely sure though. Name, want to change it definitely. So let's go this new zone for example, and let's make a sub zone for it. I'm going to copy everything because why not? New area bit always, and new zone subzone because why not and now uh, just check this all right uh, faction group that's probably another value you may want to change uh, this value is I think setting faction so zero is neutral two should be alliance and four should be actually hard I think if I remember correctly so those are actually used for that purpose and the rest of this DBC, I don't think you will ever use it at all. Usually zero everywhere and minus 500 worked for me just fine, never had any issue with it. Uh, maybe you will want to change any of those values, just take a look at our table DBC documentation and we will figure out whether there is something you should change here as well. Probably not, I would say. So that's it, we created our new zone and our subzone for our zone, just save it. Uh, put it into DBC, so I'm going to put it here, just update it, and run Nogit again, my computer will learn to fly again. Go to our map, we created our areas on. now I can use my new zones so we can see them here ah, all right I forgot to assign I think 
Yeah, I didn't set this subzone as subzone of the zone, so this should have been by the 7027. Now this would be actual subzone of the zone. My mistake, never mind. You can still see it working here. So I've got my zone custom one here. Shift click and I've got my custom zone here. And zones subzone is here. So we can either have zone, just zone, or zone, subzone, everywhere. And you can do this for custom maps as well. Anyway, whenever you create new zones, and it doesn't matter whether you make them on your custom map or on already existing map, always you should create or update your server side maps. And the reason for it is that if you want your server to work correctly with uh, general chat and with Woolist and so on, on those areas, you need to make sure that that server knows that this zone is there. Just think about it. Your server knows that some zone exists, but does your server know that this zone is placed on this ADT on these chunks? It has no way of telling it. You need to tell that to that server somehow, which means update server side maps. If you have no idea how server side maps work uh, or what they are for, check my theory series and it's described there pretty much. Uh, for now I'm not going to show you how to update those server side maps because it's quite a lengthy topic and I can't cover it in this video really. You just make sure that you update them if you don't know how uh, you should be able to find some tutorial. I, I think I wrote some tutorial as well on MCNet so you should be able to find it hopefully. So that's it. Right? Just create your areas in area type DBC and update your server state maps and you can use them on your maps like this, like using uh, like areas. So that's it guys, that's all I wanted to show you in this video. I hope this was useful for you, thanks for watching and as always, happy modding!